Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. As we start today's message in Auckland, Lord, thank you for bringing us over here, helping us to know and understand the spiritual laws, the truths that help us to live a life of victory, to live a life that you came to give us in abundance. So here we are in your presence, Lord. Make this preaching absolutely easy to understand. Make this preaching practical that with your teaching, O Holy Spirit, demonstrate your power and teach us how the Word of God which is powerful, works in our midst. Thank you and praise you in advance, Lord, that you are faithful to your word and in your faithfulness, O Lord. We thank you for all the signs, wonders that you're going to perform in our midst. Thank you, Lord, the hearts that are going to change, the minds that are going to change, and faith that is going to rise up. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many of us, when you made coffee, you found the coffee bitter? No? In New Zealand, when you make coffee, the coffee is not bitter? It is bitter. Now, when it is bitter, how many of us, when we put sugar, we start praying, God, as I stir this sugar, let the coffee become sweet. Do you pray? No. Because you know, when you put a good quantity of sugar, the sugar will melt and the coffee will become sweet. sweet. In the same way, the word of God is a spiritual law. That when you apply it, it will always bring result. And if it is not bringing result, the reason is because it has not been applied right. For example, I put this light. It is using electric power. This electric power is at this moment working for me. But if I don't apply the system right this electric power which is supposed to work for me can kill me agree come on yes. the same electric power can burn off the whole house so also the bible teaches us that god is a god of extreme accuracy he has his system in the kingdom. The moment we apply his system, no matter how bad your situation is, it will surely change. I came this morning from Melbourne. So I started my journey at 5 o'clock to be here in the evening. And I saw that the plane that was full of passengers with luggage was flying high up in the air. And it surprises that the car never flies, but the plane always flies. The car is also operating under the law of gravity. The plane also is operating under the law of gravity, but the plane flies, challenging the law of gravity. Why is it? How come everything that I leave, if I leave my iPad, I'm sure it will fall, it will go down. So how come the plane can fly with so many passengers? You mean to say the law of gravity is not working? 
it is always active but there is another law that supersedes the law of gravity is when the pilot gets the plane on the runway he hits a speed of more than 400 kilometers per hour the air that he cannot see builds pressure on the wings and it is that air that lifts the plane up in the same way the bible teaches us there is a law of faith there is a law of fear when i activate the law of fear in my life jesus said the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but i have come to give you life and life in abundance or in fullness so how will i know whether the thief is working in my life an example would be you locked the door and you came here when you went back home you opened the lock went inside everything is good praise god but you find there that the jewels are missing the money is missing from the locker and the door is open now do you need somebody to tell you that there has been a theft no no but are you sure that there has been a theft yes how come you know that there is a theft because your treasury is open and the valuables are missing in the same way how do you know that there is a thief in your house when your health is missing when your marriage is in crisis when your children are out of your hand your finances has gone for a toss your peace is broken into pieces it is an evidence that the thief is in your house and this evening the lord wants to teach us not only to know that the thief is inside your house but how to arrest the thief and destroy his work in your family anybody interested yes. or should i change the topic or should i change the topic and and, and let's listen, listen we are not only going to study the word i'm going to call people whose health has been stolen by the thief and how we can not only arrest the thief but take back the healing by force if i can take back my healing by force i can take my finances i take i can take my marriage i can take my children i can take everything that satan has stolen from me praise god praise god is it a interesting topic yes yes praise god hallelujah so first thing let's start with the word law because the bible says in romans 8 verse 2 tomorrow we will keep the bible there today we are late so we did not get connected but tomorrow we will set up everything romans 8 verse 2 have you come with your bible yes yes what is the mark of a catholic the mark of a catholic is the catholic is champion in praying but never opens the bible and what surprises me is nowhere in the bible i found jesus saying your prayer has healed you your prayer has set you free nowhere in the bible it is given your prayer shall move the mountain got activated the 
it's already activated yeah, okay 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 thank you we'll do it later on thank you so much so my phone setting is not right but the sim is activated in the same way the lord is saying that his holy spirit has been activated in us but our mind setting is not right so you went to the shop and you got the mobile settings which i have to set according to you in the same way we are here where the holy spirit is going to teach us to set our mind so when our mind is set right everything in our life will be absolutely okay praise god hallelujah okay let's come back what were we studying before they entered in romans 82 romans 82 says the spirit the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death can you read that romans 82 read that again for because because through christ jesus through christ jesus the law of the spirit the law of the spirit who gives life wow who gives you us life the law of the spirit. the law of the spirit gives us life life for wife life <laughs> the law of the spirit gives us life has set you free will set you free has. no 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 has. Will, has. will or has has, has. Yes, <laughs> has set you free <laughs> from the law of sin and death so there is two law just like the plane when it flies high up in the sky you mean to say the gravity is not active it is constantly active it is constantly pulling the plane down but there is a law called thrust and then lift so the engine firing at that speed overcomes the law of gravity in the same way in our life every day the law of sin and death is actively pulling you down but the only way you can rise up higher and higher is when you keep the law of the spirit of life active now let's study this law say that law have you heard the word law what is the law hmm rules what else i am talking about the law of gravity so there is a law of life that comes through christ jesus so what is this law a law is a principle that has been tried that anyone who gets involved in that principle the result will always be the same for example if you are under law of gravity it doesn't matter whether you are a christian or non christian the result is the same whether you are fair or dark no problem fat or thin no problem tall come on i am saying what my eyes are saying he showing me his tongue tall or short rich or poor from new zealand or from india whoever you are the moment you get involved in it the result is always the same that's the law now let us see how did this law of life 
in Jesus get activated? How did the life, how did the sin and death get activated? Now, we all know, please listen to this carefully. That's where we will win every battle of our life. Now, God created man out of the dust. Right? Yep. Then God breathed into him. Was there anybody speaking after that? No. The first thing that God spoke was he blessed man. He he blessed. He blessed. Now what is the meaning of the word blessed? You know, if I'm asking you a question, please don't get annoyed with me. I'm asking questions so that we understand better. I'm not here to check you. I'm here to help not only you, me as well, to know things better. So, what is blessed? Are you blessed? Yes. So, what is blessed? <coughs> hmm? The word blessed simply means to be empowered by the capability and ability of God. The word blessed means to bring a uh? no, it's a Bible meaning because, because dictionary meaning will be different because when God spoke to man, the first thing he says. He blessed him and said, be fruitful. So being fruitful comes because of the blessing. If his ability is not given, he cannot perform. So fruitful is the performance. Blessing is the power. Are you following? Yes. Yep. So God blessed him. Means what? God gave to man his own power, ab ability, his talents, his capacity, by which man now begins to perform like God. Because the Bible says when the angels saw that God had created man, they realized that the very reflection of God he created and that's why we are superior than the angels according to the word of God angels are not created in the likeness and image of God man is and God blessed him and when God blessed him the whole of heaven was watching that who is this man that God is taking so much of that he is so much in love of man because out of all creation man is the only creation that is like God and operates like God and functions like God did you follow so when God blessed him he gave him his power by which he can be fruitful and multiply. Are you married? Yes, <laughs> okay. Yeah, married to you. Yeah. yeah. And you are also not opening your mouth. Okay. Do you have children? How many? Can I ask her some questions? Yeah. Okay. The baby came from your womb. My question to you is, how did you create the heart of the baby? Do you have an answer? How did you create the organs of your baby? Do you have an answer? But the factory is yours. The production is yours. And that is what God is saying. When he blessed him, he gave him 
the power to be fruitful. I want to ask every mama here, how did you create those eyes? And you'll say, I don't know. All I did was to come in relationship with my husband and the process began. What was going on in my factory, in my womb, I don't know. But nine months later on, the baby came out. And the grandma said, the nose looks like grandpa. <laughs> but how did you create that nose? Imagine you created the whole organs, the whole body. Okay, mamas. And the doctor to just repair a small kidney goes crazy. Whereas you created the whole complicated body with every organ functioning absolutely perfectly. Is that right? How did that happen? Because God gave to man the power to be fruitful. Are you following? So he blessed him. The moment he blessed him, the life began to operate in the Garden of Eden. There was absolutely zero sorrow, zero pain, zero sickness, zero death. Everything was perfect. Now, we also know that Satan also spoke words. What we want to learn today is the power of words. God spoke words. Adam received words. And life began. Satan also spoke words. Satan is not a creator. And therefore he cannot create. Man is created in the likeness and image of God. And therefore man is able to create things. Because of the blessings of God. <coughs> Did you get here? Yeah. So Satan cannot create. So what does he do? He takes the words of God. And reverses. And he says. God said if you eat this fruit you will surely die. He comes and says. You will surely not die. So every time Satan opens his mouth, he speaks a lie. And he speaks a lie in such a way that the person will believe it to be truth. He said, if you eat of this, you will become like God. Now, what did that word do? It changed Eve's thinking and she ate the fruit. So what made Eve eat the fruit? Wrong knowledge or information that contradicted God's word made her focus no longer on God but on what Satan said. She went and spoke the same words to her husband and he also ate the fruit. So the word of God activated life, ability, blessings of God, but now Satan's words, when believed, agreed, Activated death, sickness, disease, sorrow, curse and all kinds of chaos in their life. What God had blessed so that man would multiply and bring generations, the marriage got 
cursed because of the wrong information and the first murder took place in the family when Cain killed Abel. Now was it God's plan for them to have a murder in the family? No, it was only the wrong message, the wrong information. Now just pause for a moment and ask a question. In a day, we are getting information. We are getting knowledge. What is the source from where you are getting knowledge every day? Is it from the Bible or is it from the world? Because whatever message you are getting, that message will make you obey the message and the moment you have obeyed, the moment you have believed, the moment you have spoken, that kingdom power gets activated in our life. So my friend, in a day, what are the messages that you receive? Is it God's word? And if it's not God's word, then you yourself, like Eve, is going into disobedience and that disobedience is not only going to affect you, you have activated a curse in your life which will affect your marriage, which will affect your children, which will affect your generation, which will affect your family, which will also affect society, which will affect the nation. Is that right or wrong? I'm asking you. So when Jesus comes into the scene, he comes to reverse what Adam had activated in the Garden of Eden, that is sin and death. So Jesus comes and speaks his words. Now the question is, am I all the time meditating on what Jesus said and what Jesus did on the cross or am I meditating on what the economy is, what the blood report is, what the doctor said, what the lawyer said, what the bank said, what the company said, what are the words that I meditate on every day of my life. Whatever I meditate is what I activate in my life. Praise God. Praise God. So am I operating on the spirit of life or the spirit of sin and death? Have you ever got worried? Now is worry sin? Yes. Is it demonic? Yes. Is it destructive? Yes. Will it torture you? Yes. Will it also, through you, torture your family? Yes. But yet, we will keep on worrying. Worry is when a person's focus is not on what God said, but on the situations. So let us see how we are operating and make the necessary changes so that everything in our life begins to change. You know the good news about Jesus is no matter how bad your life has been, when you come to Jesus, understand the principles of the Bible, make the necessary corrections and start living with them. No matter how bad you have been, 
no matter how deep you are in a pit making the correction is what brings us out of a problem let me give an example supposing i was coming from airport to come to this place i don't know this place so i put the final location saint louis church right that's the church you know a lady of lourdes church okay a lady of lourdes church okay and the lady in the gps said take a left turn and i missed it will she catch my throat no she will say no problem i'll reroute for you now why that rerouting has the kilometers increased yep. yes as the time to the destination increased yes has the fuel consumption increased yes again she began to direct me and again i missed the road will she attack me no what will she say rerouting so in a day how many times do we are rerouting by not following god's instructions and if my life is full of rerouting then will i ever experience that life that jesus came to give me or will i all the time experience the thief bashing me up what i found in the bible is that the word of god is so interesting that it is not a fluke game it is a game that you play every day where you learn the skill how to apply the word in your life when i came to the airport my brother anil came to pick me up and i said brother can you give me your hot spot and he said you take my mobile and do what you want so i connected the hot spot and he was driving but whose data was i sucking hello whose data anil's data in the same way the lord is saying my word is a hot spot anybody who wants to get connected can get connected using my hot spot by agreeing to my word and then you don't have to pay for the data i'm the one who's paying the data because now when i'm connected to him his life is flowing in me have you ever connected hotspots have you ever connected jesus hotspot because the moment you connect jesus hotspot and you are downloading healing sickness has to run you are downloading deliverance satan has to run you are downloading joy and peace worry and anxiety and stress and oppression and depression and suicidal tendency has to it is not how much you pray the bible never says how much you pray the bible says how much you believe and it also says when you believe see that you believe with your heart and not with your mind do we believe with the heart or mind mind and what's the difference between mind and heart heart starts from h mind starts with m mind is something you decide and heart is something you don't decide with 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 what mind 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 heart goes up and down emotions goes up and down and mind study hello huh with the mind and with the heart i guess i guess i guess okay let me let me explain to you the difference between the heart and mind the mind is where my is the mind an organ no brain is and mind and heart heart is an organ 
God calls heart as a spirit. Okay, let me explain. I should have explained that. Uh, they are sitting. Okay, let them be seated. There are three people. One, two, and three. Read 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Is it interesting? And, and, and I promise you, once you understand this, you can beat the devil every day in your game. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Do you have a problem with your leg, sister? No, 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 no problem. No, no, I'm asking you because I'll be the first person to call you. To get your legs healed. Is it? No. Just stretching. Okay. I hope there are sick people today. Then shut the door. So 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Why are you going so far? Are you planning to run away? When I was in college I used to do the same. When the student starts sitting next to the door there is some problem. Yeah, read 1 Thessalonians 5.23. <coughs> yeah, read. May the God who gives us peace. Uh, slowly. May the God who gives us peace. Make you holy. Make you whole. In every way. Make you whole in every way. And keep your whole being. And keep your whole being. Spirit, soul and body. Keep your whole being, yeah. keep your, your whole being. So what is the whole being? Spirit, soul and body free from every fault, free from every fault at, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So man has got how many parts? Spirit, soul and body. Praise God. Now, this spirit has got a mind which is a soul that has the power to think, feel and choose. What it has got? Think, feel and choose. And your five senses are connected to your soul. Your willpower, your intelligence is connected to your soul and this spirit lives in a house called the body. For example, my sleeves. If I move my hand, does my sleeve also move? Why does it move? Because my hand inside makes the sleeve move. In the same way my spirit inside gives life to my body and my body moves. So the day the spirit leaves this body, it becomes a dead body. Are you following? Did you get up till here? So now I can touch my body and I can feel it. Can I touch your soul? I can touch your soul by speaking words that can make you happy, that can make you sad, that can even make you angry. Is that right? The condition of your soul can be gauged by the words that I speak. So I can connect your soul, I can touch your soul, I can touch your body. Because your body and soul are connected to your five 
senses. But when it comes to the heart or the spirit, there is absolutely no connection with the soul. The only connection is with God. And that connection is through the word. That's why Jesus said, true worshippers will worship God in spirit, not in soul. Not with their emotions, not with their feelings, but in spirit. How? By truth. What's the truth? The word of God is the truth. Now let me give you the difference between believing in the heart, believing in the mind. Let's say you had ten dollars. Okay? And you saw a poor man hungry. You felt compassion for him and bought him food for seven dollars. You are hundred percent sure that that poor man is not going to pay you seven dollars. But yet you spend that seven dollars on him. Now how many dollars will you have? You had ten. You spend seven. How many will you have? Three. Now when you said three, <coughs> that is called as believing with my soul mind. So what is believing with my heart? Believing in my heart would be Jesus saying in Luke 6.38 When you give When you give It shall be given to you Good measure Pressed down Shaken together Running over Shall men Give unto your bosom Is that right? Come on is that right? Yes. So if I believe with my heart or with my spirit, then will I all the time look out for opportunities to give or to shut my purse? To give. To give. The very reason I'm shutting my purse is because I never believed what Jesus said. And because I did not believe what Jesus said, I do not receive what Jesus said. Thomas said to Jesus, uh, Thomas said to the disciples, unless I see him, unless I touch him, unless I feel him, unless I put my hand around, around his side, I shall not, what? Believe. I shall not believe. Praise God. And Jesus said, Thomas, you believe me because you have seen me. But blessed are those, blessed are those who have, blessed are those who have, blessed are those who have, and yet believe. So who are the ones who experience the blessings of God? The ones who see and believe are the ones who do not see but because God's word says so, they choose to believe. So our life is governed by believing in the mind or believing in the heart. Last night I was in Melbourne so I was speaking on the same topic of law of words. Okay. And I called a lady and I said, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes. I said, do you believe about that woman who touched Jesus' garment? She said, yes. I said, can you bring your Bible and come? So she brought a Bible. And I said, what's the problem with you? She said, I've got problem in my legs. For the last 10 years. I said okay. Now here is the Bible. Which is in your hand. Can you feel the pages? She said yes. That means it's a book. She said yes. Can you see it? Yes. Can you feel it? Yes. And I said that means it's a book. That you are touching. She said yes. But the Bible says. That the word. Was made. Was made 
flesh. Who? The word. The word. The word. So if the word was, not will be, was made flesh, then what are you touching now? A book or Jesus? A book or Jesus? But can you see Jesus or the book? And that becomes the challenge. The challenge is not what you see. The challenge is to believe what the word of God says. And I said, if you can renew your mind, close your eyes and tell God, God with my senses, it's a book. But the truth says, the word was made flesh. And if the word was made flesh, then I'm touching you, Jesus. And the next moment, she was filled with the power of God and she fell off. So before she can fall off, we put her on the chair. When she got up, I said, now check your legs, check everything. It was gone. So I said, now that it is gone, let's call somebody else. And let's do it again. And that one got healed. Then she called her husband who was deaf. And he got healed. So there were a number of people who got healed. Why? Because now the challenge is, as long as I'm believing what I see, even though you are a good Christian for 30 years or 40 years going to church, there will be nothing supernatural happening in your life. And a person can be a drunkard or a drug addict or a murderer. But the moment he repents and he makes a choice to believe God's word rather than believing his five senses, such a person will see far, far higher supernatural things than... Now tell me, let, let's... Check this. Were the Pharisees scholars in the scriptures? Were they teaching the scriptures? Then how come the Pharisees could not heal? Anybody was in Bombay? Yes. Before you came here? Yes. Who is? You are from Bombay? Not everybody. Not everybody. Okay, okay. Those who are from Bombay. We know in Bombay there are fishermen. They are the most disciplined, well-mannered people. They never give bad words. They never fight. They never drink. They never gamble. They are all the time cool guys. <laughs> even if, even if, even if the whole compartment, ladies' compartment, is full with every woman there. One fisherwoman enters in with a basket. Can any woman challenge her and say, Hey, how come you are here? Go to the luggage compartment. No. That one lady is enough for all the women in the compartment. Is that right? Whom did Jesus choose? Now, So, 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 brother, you mean to say only the women are dangerous? <laughs> yes, yes, you know all that. Yes, yes. And that's why no woman will go anywhere close to her. Secondly, she will wear all the gold. Will the chain snatcher even go close to her? Now my question to you is, how come the Pharisees had so many scriptures, the fishermen were illiterate, and yet they were the ones who were doing signs and wonders, whereas the Pharisees had all the scriptures, but nothing happened. They could not even heal a headache. They were the teachers of the law. And the fishermen were roaming with Jesus and they were doing amazing things. A man born crippled from his mother's womb. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give to you. Come on, rise up in the name of Jesus. And the man stood up. How come the fishermen can get result and the scholars of the scriptures can't get? Why? <coughs> Faith 
And what about the what about the Pharisees? They only believe in the scripture, they didn't believe in Jesus. And what about the Old Testament? There was Elijah, Elisha, Moses. There was no Jesus at that time. And still they did mighty miracles. Can we talk? <laughs> see, 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 this evening, before we leave this door, I want to show you that you all can do what the Bible says. I'm here not to show you the healing through my hands. It doesn't make me happy. What gives me the battery, what gives me the real fun is when I teach somebody who has never prayed in their life, to do things like this because it is a law. Again, it is a law. When you apply the law accurate, the result is all the time same. The reason is the Pharisees use scriptures with their mind and every time they were like a policeman checking on everybody and when they found anybody's fault they used the scriptures to beat them and punish them. Whereas Jesus used scriptures with his heart and when somebody was at fault he did not use scriptures to punish them but he used scriptures to chain them. And the disciples also learned the same. But what about the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, when you find those people who did amazing things, they did not believe from their mind, they believed from their heart. Now, what did I tell this woman? I told this woman, with your eyes you can see the book. But with the word, that's not a book, that's Jesus. Are you willing to believe? And she said, yes, I'm willing to believe. And the next moment she was weeping. She was filled with God's power. The real challenge is not how much you pray. The real challenge is how much you believe, not with your mind, but with your heart. When a person is believing with the mind, when the trial comes, the person gets into a worry mode. But when a person is believing with the heart, when the trial comes, he is excited to learn new strategies to overcome the trial. Let me give you an example. Did Jesus endure the cross with joy? No. no? Yes? No. How come you are saying yes? So he was joyful. So when your life is running out, you will be joyful. When you are going to die, you will be joyful. Hmm? He could have been joyful when he was doing his father's will. So he will be joyful. I don't think he was joyful. So, so when he is going to the cross, he's joyful with all that insult and pain and all that. No, I don't. No? No? no. Who said no? You did. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't the Bible class full of fun? Yes. It has to be full of fun. And it should be yes, no, no, yes. The question should be asked. Okay, open to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. And let's see, was Jesus joyful or was he sad? Was he with sorrow or joyful? Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. Yeah, read. Let us let us keep our eyes fixed on our circumstances. You did not hear what I said. Let us keep our eyes fixed on our problems. Where do we keep? If the wife said something, is the eyes fixed on the wife or what she said? I'm asking you. He's saying, brother, don't ask me anything. I have to go home at night. You will ask me, I'll open my mouth, I'll be in trouble. 
So don't make me open my mouth. Ask somebody whose spouse is not here. <laughs> Come on, where, where do we look at? Jesus? Or something else? Read that again. Let us keep our eyes. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. On whom our faith depends. On whom our faith depends. From beginning to end. So Jesus is the author. Can I get some other translation? Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and perfecter of faith. The pioneer and perfecter of faith. So Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And that's why the devil will try his best to distract us. He doesn't want us to focus on Jesus. Example, if I change my glasses to black, how will I see you? Clear or black? If I put red color lenses, then everything will be red. So he's saying, in the same way, Get your lenses fixed on Jesus. He is the one who gives you the faith. He is the one who gives you the faith and the promise will see to it that it is fulfilled. Then, for the joy set before him, uh -huh, uh -huh. for the joy set before him, for the joy. Joy. sorrow, joy. sorrow, joy. sorrow. Joy set before him. He endured the cross. Ah. Now was Jesus believing with his heart or mind? <laughs> That's why he has got joy. Now what is this joy? He's going to save millions. So what is joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. So what is joy? Happiness is like, you know, can you have happiness when everything is going crazy against you? Your birthday, he did not wish you. Finish, happiness is gone. Isn't it? Isn't it depending on his performance? We men always remember the date. Once in a while we forgot. All the men we remember dates perfectly. And the wife is the one who forgets. <laughs> and might be that was the wife's birthday. Full day she is decked up and this fellow is only watching football. She even comes and stands next to the screen. But he can see only the football. And when the match is close. It's quarter to twelve and she cannot take it anymore. So she is so annoyed and she says, do you know today is my birthday? What does he do? Oh, don't touch me. Get away from me. He is not even looking at me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not only you, many sitting here. And then poor fellow, full night is trying to touch her. Please, no, don't even touch me. You can't remember my birthday. What happened to the joy? Is that joy? I'll tell you what is joy. You said you got two children, right? Can I ask a question? Without your permission, I'm not asking. Can I? Okay. You did not know what is pregnancy. And one fine day, you came to know you are pregnant. You went and told him, I'm pregnant. Right? Now, you were so happy. But after three days, started vomiting. And you could not eat anything. Nothing at all. You were suffering. 
That was the first man. Did you tell him enough? Who's going to wait for those nine years? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Some of them faked in here. That means, see how quickly I said nine months. No, 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 nine. That means there is a lot of suffering. Okay? And did you say, let's abort the baby? No. Then you were so slim. Now you became like a gas cylinder. <laughs> And you are always conscious about how beautiful you are. Now when you looked into the mirror, oh my God. <laughs> then the back started paining. And the doctor said there are some complications. You will have to take 25 injections. Are you willing to take? But I did not take. I am saying, let's say, let's say you have to take 25 injections. Are you willing to take? Yes. Did you hear that brother? She is ready to go through that pain of 25 injections. And then came the ninth month. And the doctor told you, when the pain starts, come quickly to the hospital. Did you go on horse ride? Will you ever dare? You went by taxi. Supposing the taxi was not there, horse was there, would you go? No. Because in that horse ride, your baby would also go. So you took every precaution and you went. And the labor pain began. How many, how many hours? Or days? That time I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> but let's say, 10 hours. Is it painful? So when that pain was going, you were screaming. Was he smoking at that time? But the ones who are smoking, when the wife is screaming, they are... <laughs> because when they leave the smoke, the pressure will go, the baby will come out. <laughs> okay. So at that time, the 10 hours, how many times did you say, think, God, no more baby. No more. I can't bear it. Finish it, Lord, quickly. And the baby came out. You were all tired. And the nurse came with the baby. Did you say? <laughs> or did you grab the baby? And what about the pain? So in all those nine months, where was your mind? Was it on the suffering? When your mind is on the end result, you have joy. Because you're saying, this suffering is temporary. I know from here will come the baby. Did you see those baby? Did you see the baby nine months? No. What if it was a gas? <laughs> <laughs> She's pointing out to my stomach. <laughs> Praise God. So what is joy? Joy is when you're not focused on your suffering, you're focused on what you know you're going to receive and you're sure about it. It's joy. For example, you're watching a live cricket match. You're so much under pressure. And you saw that match and India won the match. Husband came from work and he's watching the last over. Is he under tension? What about you? Eating chips and watching. And the husband must be thinking, how come she's not under pressure? Why is she not under pressure? Because she knows. Because she knows the result. In the same way, when you look into the Bible, you know the result that Jesus has won the match for me. And that's why we have the joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why Jesus endured the cross with joy. Why? Because he was not looking at the suffering. He was looking at you and me. And he was only believing. All I have to do is go through this cross without sin. And because I commit no sin, I win. 
and when I win, I win not as God, I win as man. Adam lost as man, I win as man, and therefore, what Adam lost, I win it back again, and I give to my people the same power and much more to all of us. Again, 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 listen to this. Adam disobeyed and sin came into the world and we by default got infected with sin. But now Jesus obeyed the Father and because we believe in Him, what He did comes to us from Him as a gift just the way it comes from Adam. Are you following? So now we are not only born again, we have the very power of Jesus in us. We have the same capability, the same capacity, the same ability in us. But the problem is that I can only perform what I know. I can never perform what I don't know. Praise God. And when I don't know, I'm looking all around for solution, whereas the power is in me. Praise God. Is this clear? Hello, is this clear? So, do we have joy? When will a person have joy? In the midst of trouble. When he knows the end result. Let me give you an example. Supposing we three are... Wait, wait, wait. Okay. She's looking, why me only? <laughs> I, okay, I'll leave. Supposing we three are working in the office and I trouble her, insult her, abuse her, irritate her. What will be her response? Will she have joy? Hello, will she have joy? Now, open to 2 Peter, uh, no sorry, 1 Peter, 3, 9, and we will see how a person can have joy when somebody comes against you unjustly. 1 Peter 3, 9. Yeah, read, 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 read. If you got it, read it. Do not pay back evil with evil. Do not pay back. Do not pay back evil with evil. Or cursing with cursing. Or cursing with cursing. Instead. Instead. Pay back. Pay back. With a blessing. With a blessing. Because. Because. A blessing is what God promised to give you when he called you. Okay. Give me from there. Do not repay evil with evil. Do not repay evil with evil. Or insult with insult. Or insult with insult. On the, on the contrary. On the contrary. Repay evil with blessing. Repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called. Ah. That's what he is missing. Because to this you were called. So is there any Christian here? Catholic? Hello, any Catholic? Yes. So when you say you are a Catholic, that means your calling is that people will insult you. They will hate you. They will treat you badly. They will curse you. They will do all kinds of nasty things against you. And the Bible says, for this you have been called. So if somebody comes against you, are you supposed to be surprised? 
Are you surprised because you breathe oxygen? <laughs> Hello? No. So as a Christian, are you supposed to face all these negative things in your life? Yes. Now these negative things, do you think it will come only from outside? It can come from within. It can come from the family. It can come from anywhere. And when it comes, the Bible says, to this you have been called so that you may inherit a blessing. So that you may inherit a blessing. Now, which one is better to inherit a blessing or to inherit a bungalow? <laughs> inherit a blessing or inherit dollars? We are so changed, man. <laughs> New Zealand is so different. So, do people fight for blessing from their parents or property? property. Huh? <laughs> I'm asking you. Why do people fight for property? Which one is greater, the property or the blessing? But why do people fight them? Because, because they have never understood the word blessing. In the old covenant, the children would never fight for property. They would fight for their father's blessing because they realized if I get my father's blessing, then all that ability that God has given to my father it comes on me and I can produce the property. But if the blessing is not there and the property is there, in no time you will find there will be some court case, there will be some sickness, there will be some accident, there will be something and everything will be stolen by the thief. So the Bible says when somebody comes against you, and your response is to bless them, pray for them, and do good to them, then the Bible says, you shall what? Inherit a blessing. So when somebody comes against you, is it an advantage to you to rise higher? Or is it your emotions that are ruling over your life? Are you understanding? I, in, in, in India, when it's going to rain, there will be thunder and lightning. And then there will be heavy rain. So if there are thunder and lightning coming around you with people, some of them like thunder, some of them like lightning, at that time, if your response is wrong, then your blessings are gone. But if your response is based on the word of God, then you're already dancing with joy and saying, Lord, these people have come against me wrongly and I am rejoicing because your word says, when I pass this test of blessing them and doing good to them, Lord, I am so glad your blessings are on the way. Because if these people don't trouble me, then I have got no chance to practice this word. And when I practice this word, before the blessings can show up, my character has changed. Because my old character would be, I will also teach them who I am. But now I am teaching them that I belong to Christ. Are you understanding? Yes. So how many blessings downloading are we missing every day? Is there somebody irritating you? No? Anybody married? Hello? You don't get irritation? <laughs> yes. 
and in that irritation are we supposed to respond <coughs> with love and if you are responding with love has that pressure changed you hello okay okay have you seen a common coal <coughs> coal coal yeah. coal yeah. it is nothing but carbon correct the same coal under extreme heat and extreme pressure and maintaining the same location turns into a crystal diamond and that's why a marriage is turning carbon into diamonds and that's why there's always going to be pressure but the location should not change and under pressure when a person applies the word of god that person has not only changed his character the bible says when a person changes the power in him is greater than the power outside praise god so when the change takes place in that person that change in that person brings a change in the other person whenever you see any anniversary 25 years wedding anniversary have you ever gone through any 25 years wedding anniversary and they write happy 25 years of wedding anniversary that's the biggest lie <laughs> because those 25 years were not happy if they have to tell you about the things that they went through people will run away they are only telling you the good things the very thing that they lasted for 25 years is under extreme friction under extreme heat under extreme that they stood their ground did not leave their location and that is what chain them when they got married they were different but now after 25 years they found a new love we'll talk about marriage might be the topic is there on marriage yes monday. which day monday. monday monday we'll talk on marriage very good topic praise god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you. hallelujah hallelujah so we are talking about the law of words okay now let me show you how we with our own ignorance destroy our lives let me give you an example supposing a person has a car and the driver had parked the car at the edge of the cliff he had reversed the car okay and the driver and the family had gone down they are tourist okay so they went to that place they were going around and suddenly the husband felt like you know showing off to his wife so he tells the driver give me the keys and tells the wife stay here i'll get the car and he goes and says is psalm 91 psalm 23 he has got good wives and he finishes his prayer starts the engine puts the gear and 10 minutes are gone by the husband has not reached the wife so they walk up and they search for the car the car is not found what happened to the car because he did not know the gears he put a reverse gear he looked in front said his prayers and said praise the lord hallelujah let's go jesus the car will go in front or back back hello front or back? back now was the problem with the car no the problem was ignorance of the gears was the mistake of the gear yeah no yeah no the mistake was on the person who activated the gear now let's study with this intention what are the gears that we put in our life open to joel 310 is it interesting yes. yes 
are we uh, what are we here for can anybody tell me what have we come here for listen to the word of god then it's your wish <laughs> understanding the word of god again wish huh practicing when we go back see this is what he said he said i've come here to make the correction and practice the word of god result guaranteed if any person said that because i attended i will be blessed that's the biggest lie you don't get blessed because you came you see the manifestation because you are willing to make the correction okay read joel 310 read beat your plow shares into swords and your pruning hooks and your pruning hooks into spears into spears let the weakling say let the weakling say i am strong let the weakling say i am let the weakling say i am strong, the weakling say, I am strong. now my question to you is when you are weak do you say you are strong or do you pray to god and ask him to make you strong hello <laughs> I, i i am asking you a question the bible say let the weak say i am strong do you say to yourself i am strong or do you go and talk to god and pray to god and tell him god please make me strong which one the first one or second one so are you following the word of god or are you following your own understanding so supposing you are all on flight and i am the pilot and i tell you this time we are going to give you free free tickets to world tour but the condition is we are going to switch off all the gauges and we are going to fly the flight with my own understanding no gauge involved only feelings and good vibes would you like to sit on this flight no why not does the pilot fly on his feeling or on the gauge hello trusting the gauge or feeling gauge how are you running your life on the gauge or feeling so will there be a crash will there be a crash Hallelujah. Let the weak say, "I am strong." What do you say? Strong. You are saying, "Please keep me in prayer." Why? What happened? I am so weak. Do you sing that song? Give thanks. Yeah, yes. Yeah, let's sing. Let's sing. Let's sing. Come on. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Holy One. give thanks because is given jesus christ his son and now and now we say i am strong when the poor say i am rich why because of what so 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 after you sang this song you went out and somebody said how are you what do you say keep me in prayer and pray for me nicely what do you want me to pray for i am so weak man i am so tired yeah i am so sick man let the sick say i am healthy and what we what do we do now when you don't follow what the word of god says have you activated a law of destruction in your life hello so in a day you spoke a hundred words 
out of the hundred, how much was aligning with the word of God? Hmm? And imagine if I and you, we change our thinking and become extremely vigilant. Can we apply the law of words according to the word of God and change every situation of our life? Did he say pray or say? say. Which one are we? Say or pray. Catholics are champions in praying. And most of the prayer are wrong. And that's why years go by and then comes frustration. God has not answered my prayer. Did God tell you to go and ask him to make you strong? So have I activated the law of life or death? Hello. When, I, when God said, say you are strong, and I'm saying, God, I'm praying to you, you make me strong. What is he saying? He's saying, you open your mouth and speak your faith, and you will see your, you getting strong. They also said you ask in my name. Yes. So you want me to explain that? Okay. Let's take an example. Yes. Let, let's see. Good that you asked me that question. I love it. Now he's saying, but Jesus said, ask and you shall. Receive. Seek and you shall. Bye. Knock and it shall be. Okay. Suppose, are you married? No. No. Let's say, your sister, okay, she gave some clothes to the laundry, and I'm the laundry man. So she gave her five dresses. Will I give her money or will I give her receipt? Okay. She took the receipt and made the payment, and I told her to come after one week. Is it a fair deal? Yeah. So after one week, the clothes will be washed, ironed, dry cleaned, everything and given to you. So on the day of delivery, she doesn't come, but she gives you the receipt. And you come to the shop. So you are asking me to give you your sister's clothes. But you are not showing me the receipt. Will I give you? Why do you people use probably not, I think so, I hope so, yes or no? You are the people who taught us English in India, right? And we have learned to say yes or no. But you all are still saying probably, I think so, I hope so. I have this problem everywhere in New Zealand, in Australia, in London, in Ireland. So I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, simple, ask him, are you a man or a woman? So what will you say, man, I will say, I hope so, I think so, probably, will you say probably I am a man? Are you a man or a woman? Why are you not saying probably? Because I know that. Ah, in the same way. See, without a receipt, he's not going to give you the goods. Uh, the reason I said probably not is because if you know that I'm married to a woman who takes my clothes in there, you will know that I'm her husband. Without, with, without the receipt, they don't give you. They don't. So, 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 are you asking for your wife's, uh, for your sister's clothes? Yes. But unless the receipt is given, will he deliver, give you? No. 
But the moment he gives the receipt, even if she has not come, will the goods be given? So when Jesus said, ask, he said, ask the father with my receipt of what I have done for you on the cross. Let me give you an example so that it becomes easy, so that there is no confusion. If you go and ask God, did I offend you in any way? I'm sorry. Did you want to? No, I never want to. Well, why are you sorry? Because I saw you very quiet. Because I was a little bit so I can listen to okay, what you're okay. saying. Okay, <laughs> okay. Because, 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 see, listen. Because, listen. I do not want anybody to be hurt by what I'm saying. But the examples that God teaches me are so, you know, I when I go through this, and the Lord said, you ask her. I'll give you an example. A person was in depression, and I had to take him from his house. Because they were going to put him in a psychiatric ward. Okay? So when I came to know he's a good friend of mine, and he's in depression. I, I kidnapped him from his state in Goa and took him to Bangalore. And I called up the wife. Your husband is with me. Don't go to the police. I've kept him with me. And she was very happy. So I used to teach him for 15 days word of God. And all the time he would come and ask me questions. And he was the person who used to preach the word of God. False accusation had taken him into depression so i said lord he is coming and asking me the questions again and again again and again how do i deal with him he said the next time he comes you ask him a question are you a man or a woman so he will so i asked him are you a man or a woman he said i'm a man so i said are you sure he said yes i said why can't you be sure with the written word of god if you are sure about what you are, can't you be sure with what the word of God says? And every time the enemy would put a doubt on him, he would say, just as I'm sure that I'm a man, I'm sure now that God loves me. He came out of depression. Today, he is preaching the word of God. When I was in UK, he was with me. So God's way of bringing a person out of depression or any situation is his wisdom. And his wisdom, we can never understand. But when he gives it the wisdom, it solves the problem. Now, again, back to the question. Asking with a receipt. Now, if you go and ask God, God, please bless me. Is it a fair deal? Hello? Yes. Have you ever made a prayer, God bless me? Now, when you say, God bless me, you just told God you are a liar. Why are you saying that, that you are a liar? Open. Ephesians 1.3. It can't be so far. Wherever you reach, I'll tell you. No, it's, it's, it's in front. See, I know the neighbor. Ephesians 1 3. Praise be to the Lord. Listen to this. Praise be to the Lord. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pause. What did he say? And what are you saying? Either God is right or you are right. The word of God is saying yes. And what are you saying? Why are you saying that? Because you do not know 
the truth. So now what am I asking God? I'm asking God with a receipt. Lord, this is what your word says in Ephesians 1.3. And I take the delivery of this promise by thanking you that you have blessed me in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessings. So now am I speaking what the word of God says or am I speaking what everybody is asking God for? Hello, is there a difference? Yes. Yes. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. So is the word of God saying he has blessed me? Yes. You know what's the biggest problem? The problem is, as a Christian is, people think I have to work hard to get something from God. And God is saying, no, 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 no. My son worked hard and got it for you and all I want from you is believe what my son did for you. And what are we saying? Because I knelt down for three hours, he will give me more power. Because I fasted for one week, he will give me more power. And God says, that's wrong. What my son did, you believe in that, and what he did for you comes to you as a gift. So old covenant is a covenant of law of Moses where you have to do things to get from God. But in the new covenant, Jesus did for me and all I have to do is believe in what Jesus did for me. So there was a time when I did not know I would be praying Praying, praying, God bless me, God empower me, God do this, God do that. And one day when he showed me the scripture, he said, either you are right or I am right. Because we both are not in agreement. So can you change yourself and agree with me and I'll show you my glory. Are you understanding? So when God says he has blessed us, are we empowered with the anointing of Jesus. Can we bring re results like Jesus? Yes. But are we willing to believe? Yes. Believe from a heart or mind? Yes. That's where the real power is. Amen. Amen. Now let me show you another mistake. Can, can you see some mistakes and make some re rectification? And then I'll call you and see the healing that takes place. So quickly. Please be free to ask question. We've been taught here that as a kid, I, I was taught an holy angel in India. I don't know where you were taught. Okay. I am also not teaching. I am showing you. Have been teaching us like this? I am showing you what the scripture says. If I'm if I'm teaching you wrong against the scripture, you tell me. That's why your prayers take such a long time and there's no answer. I think, I think what's correct is change the way that we have God. Yes. You know, the yes. last day, we expect me as we were saying, you know, and I think we need to change our thinking. Not change our thinking, change your believing. Yeah, believing. Yeah. But it's hard, you know, it's ingrained. Okay, 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 let me, let me put it this way. Let me, okay, okay, okay. I thank God for the discussion. We'll have discussion. Please be free to discuss. Which one is better? The switch is over there and it is plugged in and all that the Lord is saying, I plugged in for you. Just put on the switch. Two, you are bringing a wire, rolling it and start doing the wiring. Which one is better? Turning on the so pressing that switch is believing and working hard is putting the pay cables right from the council, from there. You, I, I did not say you don't believe. You know, you know, you know, every person here believes. Okay. But the believing is the number three of 700 from the example that I gave you. Thomas also believed. But he said, first let me see and then I'll believe. 
And Jesus said, Thomas, you believe me because you saw me. But blessed are those who have not seen me. But yet they believe my word. So the real challenge is not to believe what you see. The real challenge is to believe what he said in his word. A person can be praying for 10 years. Believing that one day God will heal him. Is that a good prayer? She's saying, why did I open my mouth? <laughs> see, 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 listen, listen. Have I come here to show you how smart I am? No. I've come here so that when you learn this truth and I'm gone, you can carry out the same job and get so many free from their problems. Imagine for a person who has got such power in him and he doesn't know where to find the switch. And if I can in these four days show you where the switch is and how this whole system operates, my job is done. Are you following? Yep. Now when you say, Lord, please heal me, open to 1 Peter 2.24 and see what he says. And then I'll call you only. <coughs> are you having are you having any physical sickness? Not really. Okay. Uh, do you heal people? No. Never done before. So let's do it. Anybody suffering from arthritis? Arthritis? Yeah. Now arthritis is an incurable disease. So, so now, now with the scripture, we'll kill this arthritis, okay? Now, arthritis is an incurable disease. Why? The cartilages are worn out. And because the cartilages are worn out, the bones have friction. Is that right? And it is extremely painful. With medicine, it can be arrested. But that medicine has other effects as well. So now we are going to take the scriptures. Not believe in the mind. Believe in the heart. Praise God. And get the mind which is in unbelief to believe what's in the heart. Okay. And we will see God creating brand new cartilages for her that she will have. No pain. Is it a good deal? Yep. And, and, and the best part is, I'm not going to do it. She's going to do it. Why? Because before I go, I want to teach you. Why do you think I'm recording? So that those who are watching on the screen, I did not get these teachings. I had to learn the hard way and it took me 21 years to learn. But what I've learned in this 21 years, the Lord said, now go and teach what I've given you to others, record it and teach them so that it can be learned. Now when you go to a cooking class, the, the chef, does he teach you and give you the recipe? And if you follow the recipe, it might not come 100%, but can you get 80%? But with that practice, can you become 100%? So faith can be taught. That's what Jesus did. He taught his disciples. So that in three and a half years, they were so trained that they could go and do the job. Why are we not able to do? Because we have not been taught how to do it. Okay, let me ask you. Has anybody come? I'm not boasting of myself. I'm just asking you a question in your life. Somebody preached and then said, we'll call some sick people and what has been preached, we'll do the demonstration. Did anybody do that? Supposing I come to a, a teach you a cooking class, but I teach you a theory and never put on the gas. You did last time you were here. Hmm? You did last time you were here. What did she say? You did. Last time you were here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do it every day. 
why do i do it so that people will be excited and say hey this is how it happens i now not only can fix this job but there is a crisis in my marriage there's a crisis in my children there's a crisis in the health there's crisis in my finances the system is the same yeah read it listen to this listen carefully sister listen carefully yeah he himself bore our sins jesus himself bore our sins in his body in his body on the cross on the cross so that we might die to sins so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness <laughs> hold on hold on so that we might die she said look she didn't look it no 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 so that we might die to sins husband was looking at me what is he saying so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness then by his wounds by his wounds you have been healed now what is the bible saying you have been healed what are you saying So either God is a liar or you are a liar. So as a Christian, what is my battle? My battle is not what can I get from God. My battle is how much can I believe in God? And the power is not outside; the power is inside. Okay, let's put it this way. when you go to have shower you only see the tap right do you see the pipe no do you see the tank no do you kneel down and pray god give me water no you straight away go to the tap and you turn the tap the way you want does the water come so in the same way when you believe what the word says the healing power flows into your body but when you start saying to god heal me the tap gets tighter and tighter how many years you prayed let's be honest let's learn it come on how many years you are suffering from 2006 6 so 13 years 13 years how many times did you say god heal me every day but it did not go well, now getting, now, worse. getting worse okay okay now she is going to come speak only those scriptures and add one more scripture 3 minutes not only the pain will be gone the cartilages will be made new isn't that fantastic yes. <laughs> and i'm not going to touch you only the word okay let's make a deal you don't touch her only speak words is that okay give me one more scripture psalms 22 14 now what are we learning the law of words so how are we going to heal her by by words law of words now we now when we are speaking words if you are speaking god's word what will come blessings blessings healings will manifest if you are speaking words contradicting to god's word what will come so 13 years what were you speaking see see i see the bible never 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 says my people are destroyed by the devil never The Bible says, "My people are destroyed because they are ignorant. My people are destroyed because they have wrong knowledge. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge." Read that fourteen. I am poured out like water. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. Enough. and all my bones are 
Now, when you look at Jesus on the cross, how many of us can ever imagine that every one of his bones were out of joint? Now, her bones are not out of joint, only the cartilages are worn out and she has extreme pain. Some of them are on painkillers. Are you on painkiller? Yeah. Because their pain cannot be bone. Now, this bone has not come out of joint and yet this much pain. Can you imagine every one of his bones are out of joint? What would be the intensity of pain? So now, do we have the receipt? My brother said, ask. Now, are you going to speak the scriptures? Yes. What are you doing? You are showing the receipt. What receipt? What she has done or what Jesus has done? How many times the devil was pointing out to you that you did not get healed because of what wrong you have done? <coughs> Mistakes you have done. He puts guilt. You're not getting healed because somebody has done something. You have done this. Husband has done this. In the family like this. All those things. Satan's job is to get your focus on that. But our job is to always focus on what Jesus did for us. Come. Are you a Christian? Yes, she is a Christian. She's walking like an army man, man. Takak, 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 takak. The way she came, like, you know, the, the a military man walking, takak, 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 takak. So you got a threat this way, all over your body or only uh, below your waist. Okay. We will not touch her, okay? And we'll still do it. Now, can you come on the screen, both of you? Yes. What's your name? Genevieve. Genevieve, Genevieve. how do you look? How come you're looking fairer than me? <laughs> I thought the camera problem. Okay, what's your name? Val. Huh? Val. Val. And you are? Genevieve. Genevieve. So to my right is Genevieve from Oakland. And you are? Val. Val. To my left is Val and the boxing match is going to begin. You know, for me, every I used to be in street gang fights. So every day I enjoy the same fight. <laughs> and that's why I, I enjoy, I love boxing. So now it is spiritual boxing. 13 years she has been tortured and she's doing it for the first time. So she is put on a gloves and she is going to punch and it's going to be a knockout punch. Are you ready to watch the match? Yes. And it's free. Praise God. Hello. It's free. Hallelujah. Hello. It's free. Hallelujah. Praise God. Conditions. You are not going to pray. You are only going to listen what she says. Okay. Yeah. With your eyes closed. Concentrating. Two. Your operation will be done in public. Is that okay? Not in a sleeping standing position. Is it okay? And the charges are free. Is that okay? <laughs> Last condition. The cartilages are going to be replaced. And there will be no cuts, no bleeding, no stitch marks. Is that okay? And it is going to be painless operation. Yes. All conditions met. Yeah. And you are on the camera. Yeah. <coughs> Can you please come close okay we'll go a little back then <coughs> all coming okay yeah you are going to concentrate looking at jesus and speak clear words slowly and believe every word your job is to speak and believe not get a heal that healing job is the word when the word goes out of your mouth it goes into her ears she starts thinking the moment she has accepted the word, the word goes and finds the problem and kills it because the Bible says the word is alive. Okay? 
close your eyes close your eyes and say this lord jesus loudly lord jesus i thank you i thank you i praise you i praise you i've never done this before i've never done this before but lord but lord i'm so excited i'm so excited and i'm confident i am confident in your word in your word and i'm doing it for the first time and i'm doing it for the first time and it shall continue and it shall continue every day of my life every I thank you. I thank you for calling me. For calling me. I believe. I believe. I am baptized. I am baptized. I am anointed. I am anointed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Your word says. Your word says. Your bones. Your bones were out of joint. Were out of joint. For our sake. For our sake. Right now. Right now. I believe. I believe. With all my heart. With all my heart. With the anointing. With the anointing. The power. The power. The authority. The authority. That you have given me. That you have given me. I am talking. I am talking. To that spirit of infirmity. To that spirit of infirmity. Arthritis. Arthritis. Working. Working. In this sister's body. In this sister's body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am talking to you. I am talking to you. Your spirit of infirmity. Your spirit of infirmity. Arthritis. Arthritis. I bind you. I bind you. I curse you. I curse you. Like Jesus cursed the fig tree. Like Jesus cursed the fig tree. And it died from the root. And it died from the root. I cast you out. I cast you out. Of this body. Of this body. Right from the root. Right from the root. Go and be planted into the sea. Go and be planted into the sea. And you shall never come back again. And you shall never come back again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. For casting that spirit out. For casting that spirit out. Now. Now. I speak to all the bones. I speak to all the bones. 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 Be aligned. Be aligned. Cartilages. Be aligned. Be aligned. Recreated. Recreated. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All the ligaments. All the ligaments. Tendons. Tendons. Nerves. Nerves. Be relaxed. Be relaxed. Completely loosed. Completely loosed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I have spoken it. I have spoken it. The bones are aligned. The bones are aligned. Made strong, made strong, and every pain, and every pain has left the body. Has left the body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing the sister. For healing the sister of this arthritis. Of this arthritis. Permanently. Permanently. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Say this, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I did not know. I did not know the truth. The truth. And I kept saying. And I kept saying the negative words. The negative words. Right now. Right now. I repent. I repent. And I ask you. And I ask you to please forgive me. To please forgive me. And cancel. And cancel. And destroy. And destroy all those negative words. All those negative words that have come out of my mouth. That have come out of my mouth. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For healing, for healing me. me. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For healing me completely. For healing me completely. Cancelling all the past wrong words. Cancelling all the past wrong words. And giving me a new life. And giving me a new life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I am set free. I am set free. Amen. Amen. Now, can you move your legs up and down? Move it up. Down. Any pain now? No. When I came, mm. just now it was feeling very badly. Just very badly. Now there's no pain. No. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you try a bit more? Sorry? W what did she ask? Can, can you lift it higher? Nothing? 
I see it every day. I see it every day. I score 100 out of 100 because it is the word of God. What is her job? To heal her or to believe and speak? Whose job is to fix her? The Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will move into action only when I agree to his word. So what's my job from now on? Search the Bible and find Those were the days when the teachers used to trouble me. <laughs> now it's my turn. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell me one thing. How did you how do you feel now that when you spoke those words, the sister of who was suffering from 13 years got healed? How do you feel? That's all. So are you going to continue? I like to, but I'm not sure I can. Is she supposed to do it? No. So what does she need to do? She needs to learn the scriptures. That's all. Praise God. Can I get somebody else? Thank you. I'll take him last. I know him. Anybody else? <laughs> What, what what pain you got? Okay. So what are you going to do for the thyroid? Can you come in this side? Yeah, tell me what are you going to do about the thyroid? Yeah, then you want to continue? Are your words going to heal you? Are your go words going to heal you? Yeah. Is she talking future tense or past tense? Present tense. Going to heal? <laughs> Thank God I learned English in school. <laughs> going to heal her. Past tense, future tense. Whenever a person is making a prayer in the future tense, he is in trouble. Because every prayer in the future tense is hope. Jesus never said your hope has healed you. He said your, your faith has healed you. Praise God. Now, she had a desire to get healed of arthritis. So that became a hope. Did she say a prayer or did she say her faith? Again, again. Did she say a prayer or did she say her faith? Did she speak the scriptures? So whenever a person is speaking scriptures on what she is hoping for, that person is supplying substance. <laughs> that person is supplying and that substance is what changes that hope into manifestation whereas this sister sorry this sister was having a hope but instead of saying faith she was saying prayer faith is when you align with God's word when you don't align with God's word you are Praying, but not the words of faith, but the words of fear. So when a person is not supplying faith, but fear, will the sickness get healed or will it become more worse? Are you, are you understanding? So whenever you have hope and you are opening your mouth and going to speak, first thing you must ask, for this hope, do I have a relevant scripture? Because if there is no scripture backing, then there is no substance that you are sending. And when there is no su substance sent, there is going to be no manifestation. So hope 
plus faith that is substance equals manifestation so faith makes your prayer work did she say scriptures yes did she say prayer according to the scriptures yes, yes. now did that substance called faith make prayer work so remember prayer does not make your faith work but faith will make your prayer work so every time you open your mouth to pray you must have scripture to back you up say that in the name of jesus i rebuke this infirmity of thyroid and i command my body be completely healed in the name of jesus i declare i am completely healed totally set free in jesus name amen yes please 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 come here yeah Hmm. And you, do you have to say scripture relates to that? Like, for example, you said Jesus is born from hmm. So if you're doing, say, for a deaf person, do you have to take appropriate scripture, or can you use use the same scripture? Okay. Do you drive a car? Yeah. Good. So you brought the car to the service station, and you said the tire is flat. Do I need to repair your tire, or do I need to repair your steering? So will I open the steering and the headlights and the engine and the gearbox by the time you come back? No, I'm asking you. No. And what if I've opened all that? Useless. You're calling me useless? <laughs> Why did you say useless? Ah, the work was useless. In the same way, when you are not picking up the relevant scripture. the the bible is your toolbox to repair anything did you get that yes. huh no 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 you don't have to learn the bible the bible is jesus it's your relationship with jesus see if you have the scripture and you don't have relationship with him then it will come from here and anything comes from here will give you nothing but because you have relationship with him you hear his voice it tells you what to do did god tell joshua to praise god and go around jericho yes did god tell him when on the seventh day when you blow the trumpets the wall will come down yes so when you spend time with god he will not only give you the scripture he will also give you instruction what to do so i am not spending time in the scriptures so that i get more knowledge i am spending time in the scriptures so that i begin to know the character and my relationship with god Do you know I spoke for two hours ten minutes? Yes. See my my camera is saying I spoke for two hours ten minutes. Now I spoke for two hours ten minutes. Do I look tired? Because I'm talking about my lover, whom I love, and I'm telling you about his love for all of us. anybody else before we go what time is the winding time 9:30 9:30 yeah yeah brother very negative is very negative no 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 let's say let's say he doesn't want to stand okay but the moment you said he is very negative did you bless him or did you curse him please understand please understand 
let the weak say i am strong do you know why we fall into the trap because we speak what is there if he is negative how many times are you saying he is negative so when you are saying he is negative will he ever change no but if you can change your words will those words change him yes the problem is you are telling him you tell yourself this lady who was standing here when she was talking was she talking to you or was she talking to that spirit in you so who told you to talk to him and that's why it will end up with friction how many years married and then right 50 years happy married life can we change listen sister can we change i i give you a guarantee do one thing don't tell him anything i'll give an i'll give an example I'll, no 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 don't do that don't do that don't ignore him don't, don't ignore him listen listen will will you will you listen to me okay let's say we both are co- working in the same company okay and i'm troubling you and going on troubling will you fight with me or will you go to the manager go to the manager why are you not fighting with me because he will deal with you because you are committed to the company i am committed to the company am i committed to you no so you will go to the head office so why are you dealing with him go to the head office <laughs> and i'll tell you once you put it in the head office the head office knows how to fix everybody believe me marriage will become beautiful the problem is you are committed to an imperfect person and you yourself are imperfect no he's very good he's very nice what is this problem yeah <laughs> now what did you confess only this problem e has and the bible says what you say is what you receive so what you should have said only this problem he used to have but now is changed <laughs> why in old age have you started men Yeah, come. <laughs> yeah, what is your problem? Forty uh, years uh, asthma. Wow, for forty years. Let's kill it today. Yeah, and thirty years constipation. Let's kill it. Which one you want to kill first? Okay. Both of them just. Okay. Now, do you have a problem in your stomach now? Um, yeah. Some pain or something? Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to do? Can you come? Husband allowed? <laughs> you want to do it? No, I want me to do it. <laughs> you will have to bit a big punch in our stomach. Yes. Ready? Yes. Are you ready to take the punch? Yes. yes. Okay. Hold hands. No, no. Give, give that hand. Yeah. Close your eyes. Concentrate. and listen carefully we are going to see right before our eyes asthma going out forever say this lord jesus lord jesus i thank you i praise you i thank you i praise you this was my desire 
this was my desire and you made this brother call me and you made this brother call me lord jesus lord jesus teach me your truths teach me your truths teach me your ways teach me your ways i want to live for you i want to live for you as for me and my spouse as for me and my spouse we always long to work in your kingdom we always want to work in your kingdom lord jesus lord jesus as i hold my hand as i hold my hand with the sister's hand with the sister's hand i do believe i do believe in your word in your word you said you said all those who believe in you all those who believe in you these signs will follow them these signs will follow them in my name in my name they shall cast out demons they shall cast out demons that means that means in your name in your name i am authorized i am authorized to cast out to cast out the spirit of asthma the spirit of asthma the spirit of constipation the spirit of constipation every spirit of infirmity every spirit of infirmity i believe your word i believe your word and therefore and therefore in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i am talking to the spirit of asthma i am talking to the spirit of asthma constipation constipation spirit of infirmity spirit of infirmity i bind you i bind you i curse you i curse you i rebuke you i rebuke you i cast you out of this body i cast you out of this body right from the root right from the root and i thank you lord and i thank you lord your healing power your healing power is flowing into this is, body is flowing into this body and you have set her free and you have set her free you have blessed her you have blessed her with new lungs with new lungs that she is able to breathe freely that she is able to breathe freely i thank you lord i thank you lord a whole digestive organs a whole digestive organs the whole system the whole system is once again restored is once again restored recreated recreated completely healed completely healed in jesus name in jesus name thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus for giving her this new life for giving her this new life in jesus name in jesus name amen amen so this in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i am healed of asthma i am healed of asthma constipation constipation i am totally set free i am totally set free in jesus name in jesus name amen, amen. now what can you do by which you can know the asthma attack can you take a round fast running and come yeah yeah like we are running here inside you can go just a big round and come back outside yeah because you know when a person has got asthma you won't be able to run more than 20 20 30 meters so by the time you run and come back you will come to know that there is no more breathlessness Can you do that for Jesus? Yes. yes. Somebody keep an eye on her, please. No joke. Somebody keep an eye on her because she is. Just 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 keep an eye on her because an asthma asthma person, no. What happens is when they run, they go out of breathlessness that there will be no oxygen to breathe. Just just keep an eye on her, but there is no space here, no. asthma i kill 100 out of 100 and so i enjoy every day i have boxing match and she'll come and say oh my god i never felt i can breathe so freely think she's gone for a big round <laughs> sometimes some of them become so happy they don't even stop after that they are saying i have never felt so free so i want to run one more round 
because only a person who has been suffering 40 years is not a joke. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. You know why? If you had not worked for that, she wouldn't have got healed. We are all interlinked with one another. You ran fast? Yes. Is it different? different? Completely different? Come, come, come. Isn't it amazing? As soon as you were praying, I do something. Leave you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the spirit. Amen. And that constipation also is healed. Tomorrow, when you come back, you can tell us everything is gone. How many? How many is sitting here has got milk, food, wheat, allergy, something like this? Acidity. Acidity. Okay. No, there, there are many who will get in in these countries. You all have. A lot of food allergy, you know. They can't drink milk, they can't eat wheat, bread. <coughs> what about you? Well, originally I'm from Fiji. Hmm. <clears throat> well, we eat any group. In family, I see people don't have sugar, not a lot of milk. That's Anybody that. having food allergy? No. no. Okay, praise God. Come, brother. Just hold, hold, hold. Just hold. Hold it. No, no, just hold. Sit down. Sit down. No, no, no. My mic. You can sit down. Sit down. Sit down. How much vision you have? I do not have any vision in my right eye. And in my left eye, very little. 1%, 2%. So you can't see the light? I can see the light. But you can't see anybody? No. Zero. If I sit and if I focus for some time, then I can see something. There's nothing. Okay. Yeah. Luke 4 18 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. My God Himself has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. My God himself has anointed me. He has sent me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. He has sent me to declare sight. He has sent me to declare sight complete sight to the blind to set the oppressed go free and to declare the year of the Lord's favor to declare sight sight in the name of Jesus sight thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus, for restoring his sight. Lord, in your name, I speak to the retina, the nerves, the optic nerves be recreated, the lens be recreated, replaced. Thank you, Lord, that the eyes are made new and is able to see freely. Thank you, Jesus. 
Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive sight, my brother, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What do you see? The same or improvement? Slightly, slightly brighter. Thank you, Jesus. We believe in healings, in miracles, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving him new sight, for healing his eyes completely, restoring them in the name of Jesus. Thank you and praise you, O Lord, for everything. In the name of Jesus, be healed and be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be healed. Amen. Now, can you see me? <clears throat> Okay, you keep praying the law of faith, thanking the Lord that it has been accomplished. There is some improvement. Yeah, I can see light to my right eye, which I couldn't see before. So previously you could not see? It was black. It was black. Yeah. Now you can see the light. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And the other eye? The other eye, I could see the light. Thank you, Jesus. Can you see the people with this eye? Yeah, at least light. the shadow? That's a normal yeah, light. I can, I can see. see. Can we see from the light? Yeah. You can see people sitting around? Yeah. Previously, you could not see. You can see better. Now you can see better. Okay, we'll pray one more time. I can see some light in the right eye. Lord Jesus, Anias came and laid hands on Saul and said this verse. Brother Saul, in the name of Jesus, receive your sight. In the name of Jesus, receive your sight. In the name of Jesus, receive your sight. Thank you and praise you, Lord. Thank you and praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, much better. It is a it's better than before, but I still cannot see with the uh, with the right eye. I can't see people. I can see the light. Okay, left eye. <coughs> the left eye. The left eye. I can't see people. You can see people now. Better. 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 Praise God. So every day, can you both keep saying, thank you, Jesus, his eyes are already healed. His eyes are already healed. Okay? <coughs> thank you, Father. We thank you. We praise you. Yeah, you can go and sit on your seat. I purposely did not go to take him to the seat, but he came on his own and he came right to the seat. Well, when he got up, I had to go and bring him. Praise God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for teaching us this truth. And those who are watching now by YouTube or through internet, the same anointing, the same teaching is available for each one of us. And as we renew our mind 
on the word of God. Not only our lives are changed, we become a blessing to others. Yes, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, touch this family, touch this household. I thank you, I praise you for complete recovery and restoration in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us all these truths in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise so tomorrow what time we meet? Nine. Nine. Thank you, Jesus. So tomorrow when we come, we